happy Tuesday with Tamika. Thank you guys for joining me for yet another episode of Tuesday with Tamika, where y'all already know what it is. We believe in lifting as we climb, turning those trials into treasures, living a life to inspire and not impress, opening up and allowing God to fully restore you and loving as if you have never been hurt. I am super excited about today's episode. It is going to be another good one. So y'all already know what we do. Grab your pens, grab your papers, because we are about to get to the coaching. You know what is interesting, you guys? I wrote a post about not being who people assumed me to be or who people thought I was or who I even was in the past. And a lot of times we have these titles, some that we've given ourselves, some that other people have put on us, and we tend to live out those titles. You guys already know if you've been rocking with me for a little bit of time, I don't call myself a divorced woman, but I say I have successfully completed some relationships. And I'm going to open up with you guys a little bit today. One of those successfully completed relationships tried to come back and haunt me and tried to come back and really knock me off of my game by telling me the story that I was telling wasn't the authentic truth. And what I know for sure is as we are navigating through this world and as we are walking through these healing streets, we all have our perspective. And I want you to know right now, as you are listening to the sound of my voice, your perspective is valid. It is so important for us to validate our own perspective, but also this is why God has created counselors, therapists, and folks that can help us to really unravel our perspective, to see if what we believe and the way that we perceive the life that we were living is the 100% truth. Because in the moment, it's the truth. But as you live a little, you begin to understand your part in that situation. I am super honored and super humbled that God has given me the ability to right my wrongs and the ability to admit my faults in situations that I perceive to be the one on top when in reality, baby girl, I had a negative part to play in a lot of situations. I believe today's guest is going to really put the icing on the cake of that thought of how our perceived ideas, our perceived values, our perceived notions that we have as we are walking through this life can sometimes be skewered by the the lenses of hurt by the lenses of unhealed places in our heart. I can't wait to jump into this topic. I can't wait to jump into this conversation. So without further ado, hey sis, you have a minute? Hey sis, sis, you got got a minute? Hey sis, you got a minute? Hey sis, you got a minute? Hey sis, you got a minute? Hey, 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 I do have a minute, I do. How are you today? I am doing well, Marquita. Tell the TWT family a little bit more about you. Absolutely. First and foremost, I just want to honor you for having me on an amazing platform. Um, I thank you for allowing me to be here and to tell a little bit about myself and my story. So, yes, so as you said, I am Marquette L. Walker. I am a minister. I am a uh, life coach, a motivational speaker. Um, I am also a author of Divorce But Not Defeated. And let's dig a little bit deeper in the personal side. I am a wife. I am a mother of two wonderful young men. They are 29 and 30 years old. And then I also have four bonus babies, um, ranging from 24, 23. 13 and 10. And the icing on the cake there is I have six grandbabies and just one was just born last week. Oh my goodness. Yes, I told my son, I'm gonna need him to to stop now because I'm trying to stay a Gigi. I I know (laughs) I know my grandmother, but you know, grandmother just carry a little more weight to it. But Gigi is keep you young and fashionable. So um, I told him I'm trying to stay in that realm right there. Um, but yes, so. Um, I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I am currently uh, in 
uh, Morrisville, North Carolina, where I reside, been here for a while now. Um, loving it here, love all the trees and the greenery and all that good stuff and getting away from the snow, um, the cold and all of that. So when I go back and visit, I can't stay for long. Um, I also, let's see, um, I have a coaching program, Winning Women. And what comes along with that is I'm just helping coach women through their healing phase so they can win. We need to win. And the enemy is trying to keep us bound or keep us in a place where um, we cannot fulfill our complete potential in God, in our purpose that he has called on our life, placed on our life. So I'm doing that, um, speaking, telling my story. And I'm going to tell you, Divorce But Not Defeated story is something to read about. I will tell you a little bit um, more as we go on in this interview. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it about Mark Wett in a nutshell. Oh, wow. You are busy and I love it. Booked, busy and booed up, I like to say, <laughs> because you are managing it all and with a, a beautiful grace that's on your life. So what I know for sure is that when God kind of thrust us into these positions of coach, of mentor, of uh, therapist, or any time where we are really helping people heal those broken places, it, it doesn't happen without any scars of our own to show. Absolutely. So I want to hear about that. I want to hear about what really drove you into this place of coaching and helping mm -hmm. women in, in their place of uh, learning how to win from those broken places. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. That's a really good question. And let me tell you, I tell people we cannot preach about things that we have not been through. Mm. How are we able to help somebody and we ain't never experienced it in our life? So God has given us the stories that we have um, because he knew we can carry the weight of them. And then not only that is that we're able to tell it. We were going to be bold enough to tell our story. Yeah. So for me, um, I'm going to tell you, it started back. So I was born and raised in a church. And when I say born and raised, I was literally born and raised, pretty much um, birthed on a pews. That's how much I was in church. And um, as I was growing up, um, I seen these awesomely amazing uh, marriages, like, oh, they were so happy in, in church. They're always kind and loving. And I just kept saying, one day that's going to be me, right? Mm -hmm. But then um, as I was growing up, I remember, um, I well, I used to tell people I hid behind all of the makeup, the nice clothes, the fancy cars, the money. Mm -hmm. But the key word is I hid behind them. What was I hiding? So what, what I was hiding was the shame, fear, guilt, and simply just not having any accountability. I didn't have none, not, no forgiveness for nobody. You heard me, you're done. You know, I was that type of person. Mm -hmm. And so um, as I thought about my life, as I, I reminisce on it, my mom and my dad, the, um, where the childhood trauma comes in um, that I didn't state is, and that's where it all begins. A lot of us need to go back to childhood. We have yeah. to dig, we have to pull back the layers. So for me, um, it started in childhood with my mom and my dad. They were married 18 years. Um, and at this point, you pretty much know the ups and downs of each other, the ins and outs. You snatching your wigs off. You you help, they helping you take your wig out, your weave out, <laughs> all that stuff, right? But then um, my dad decided he was going to divorce my mom. And my mother, uh, I just never forget that day she came home from court with these crocodile tears in her face and um she she just cried and I saw the hurt I saw the rejection um the abandonment and as a little girl 11 years old I'll never forget I internalized all of that stuff mm. all of those wounds and everything that I I listed um from uh abandonment it it cut me uh rejection it cut me um the pain, the hurt, even her tears, all of that hurt me. They cut me on the inside. So Marquette is now walking around bleeding on the inside because remember, I, I have not addressed these issues because I didn't realize they were there. Mm -hmm. So now all I'm thinking is I have this idea of marriage. I'm going to be, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a happily marriage. It will not be like my mom and dad's marriage. I'm going to be happy like the people in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, in 1995, I get married. I never known all the ins and outs, ups and downs, the things that you go through in marriage, the things we sacrifice in marriage. Um, 
And so I start going through things and things and I'm looking around for help now. Like, this is not what I know marriage to be. Right. And so mm-hmm. now I'm like, oh, this ain't it. It's cut loose. So, so I find myself in a divorce. Then, um, so I'm moving right along, still have not dealt with the scars. They're still in there. The wounds are still in there. I have not allowed God to stitch these clothes yet, but hold on. So then I go to 2000, still not knowing about marriage. So mm-hmm. I still in love with the idea and what it looks like, right? And a lot of times us women or men, we're in love with what it looks like or supposed to look like or the idea of it, right? Mm-hmm. And so that was me. And so now I'm going into 2000, I get married again, and I call this marriage shame on me. Um, and the reason why I call it that is because it was the same man in a different body. Mm. I, I met him at the same location as the other one. So you know what? I tell people, we want different results, but we do the same thing. Help me make that, help that make sense to me, right? <laughs> and so then I get married again, still not understanding the, the marriage concept and having the same issues same problems, the same uh, mistrust, the infidelity, all this stuff. And so I find myself in a divorce again. And so now between uh, the second and third, so I'm planning for my third, still ain't got it together. But let me tell you, at this point, God was telling me, he was trying to get me to a place to understand the downloads that he was giving me. Like, baby girl, your 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 uh, childhood is chasing you. You're steady running away from it. And I'm just trying to get you to a place to heal, mm-hmm. right? And that's what God is doing for a lot of us, but we don't understand it because we're not in a place to receive it, understand it, or um, ingest it or digest. We can't do it. And mm-hmm. so now between three, so this is the kicker and this is where it all started to change for me. I invited my father to... Uh, my third wedding, and he he was at the first one, invited him to the third, and he said, you know, now, I understand marriages have their ups and downs. They have their ins and outs. I'll give you the first one. I'll even give you the second one, but by the time you get to number three, there's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. So, me, first of all, I didn't even like my dad. I, I was like, you know what? I just had a real bad art with him because of how he treated my mom, and so, I picked up the phone and I called him one day and I just went off very disrespectful, just like he was not my dad. That's how I talked to him. Like this man, you, you, the nerve of you, you divorced my mom. You made my mom feel the way she felt and had her crying the way she cried. So I just had a lot of anger for him and, and, and hatred pretty much for Mm -hmm. him. And so I picked up the phone, let him know. And then, but a light bulb went off though. A light bulb went off and said, oh, maybe there is something wrong with you. You're going into your third marriage. So now I'm going to my third marriage. And then uh, my mother passed away. So now I already got all this, all these wounds on the inside. Now I'm dealing with guilt. I mean, grief on the top of that. Mm. So my mom passes away. I tell anybody, do not make a life-changing decision when you're going through grief. Because when you come up out of that, you're going to be looking around like, what did I do? So that was me. I'm looking around like, what did I do? This is not it. So now that was very short-lived. But then at that point, I said, okay, enough is enough. God, come and see about your child. So now I started um, I started going to church. I, I was very intentional going to church. I was there every Sunday. I was there. Anything they had going on, I was there, but I was on the front row of the guy. I had to get it. I said, you know what? I need what God is trying to give me. Now I tell people I was on the front front row, but maybe not the front row, maybe, maybe the third or fourth, maybe in the back row, but I was there trying to get what God was giving me. I needed to get um, connected so I could understand what was going on with me. And so I was very intentional um, for six whole years. I'm very intentional in this six year uh, time frame. I did not date. Um, I did not um, talk to anyone. It was me and God. I tell people, God and I, we dated. We, we, I mean, we had a good old date. I could have just married God and I would have been good, right? But he was showing me in this time, baby girl, let me tell you, these are the areas that I need to fix in you. I needed to reveal. And you know what? It's something when God show you yourself. Oh, that is the mo- that is the worst thing. To see yourself, truly see yourself. A lot of times we're looking to make them, oh, we look good, but that's not it. I'm talking about the inner core of you. So God mm-hmm. showed me myself. He said, you have shame. 
you have guilt, you have all this childhood trauma. And all I want to do is stitch these wounds closed. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started to pray. I fasted. I meditated. I journaled. I took myself on a date. I learned who Marquette was. I learned how God loved me in spite of all of the mess that I had going on with me. He still loved me and was still there to get me to a place to heal so he could bless me. Mm -hmm. And so these men, they did come for me in the six years. I said, uh, absolutely not. They was like, well, could you take my number? Nope, I don't want your number. Well, can I take you on a date? Nope, you cannot take me on a date. Um, well, just let's be friends. Absolutely not. I have a friend in Jesus. That's all I need. So I was real <laughs> and intentional. Yeah, I was intentional. So then now we're moving after the six years. Oh, and it was such an awesome time. Now, it wasn't good in the first uh, few years. Because God had to really clean me up on the inside. He showed me, you don't even have forgiveness. You don't have patience. You don't have grace. You don't have um, uh, understanding. You don't, ha you don't have any of that, wow. right? And I was like, oh God. I felt like I was getting whooped up on the first three years. But I was very intentional that I needed to heal and I needed to know what was going on. And so, and it all started, my healing process started when I had to pick up the phone and call my dad back. Because I remember the Bible say, um, honor thy father and thy mother that your days may be long on the earth. And I hurry up and pick that phone up and call them back. Because let me tell you, Tamika, I saw my days kicking down. They was dwindling, dwindling down real fast. They were being numbered. I'm like, oh, Lord, I ain't going to be on this earth very long if I do not pick up this phone and call him. And yeah. so I called and asked for forgiveness. And I said, Dad, what you and mom had going on, that was between you, her, and God, not you and I. I internalized that and I made it be about me and it was not. And I asked for his forgiveness and I said, you are my dad. Um, God had put you in position to father me and I have to respect you as such. And so I asked him for forgiveness and our relationship turned around. And that at that point is when I start feeling the healing process start take place. And so now six years go by um, and then I, I, I thought I had it. And that's what I call number four. I thought I had it, but there was still something there that still needed to be dealt with because I, I attracted brokenness. Um, um, and this gentleman was, he was still broken because he still loved his ex-wife. And oh. um, so, yeah, it, it was something, but this was, and, and, and I said, God, this gotta be a test. So anyway, we get married. And I find out that oh, that there's something just not right. And then God revealed it to me. Um, and so um, I let him, I released him out. I said, you know what? I have to release you. It hurt for a little bit because I really thought I had it. Mm -hmm. And um, the enemy tried to tell me you failed again. See, there go another strike against you. Now this is fourth. This is your fourth marriage that you have failed at. And that's what the enemy speaks to our minds, but we have got to shut the enemy down. We mm -hmm. have to shut them down. And so God told me, no, you did not fail. Now you got to experience what grace looks like, what mm -hmm. forgiveness looks like, what patience looks like, what understanding looks like. And so I internalized all that and I felt the love of God just wrap his arms around me and say, I still got you, baby girl. And, I, and I'm going to bless you with the desires of your heart. And so now I took some more years off, maybe about three, I think it was about three, almost four years off. And then God met me back at the well. I used to call myself the modern day woman at the well, because as you know, the woman at the well, what found in John chapter four, she was married five times and had a live-in. I didn't make it to the live-in. I stopped at five, but <laughs> she, um, God met me back at the well and he sent me a man that loves me unconditional, that's there. We locking arms together, making this thing work and letting people know it can work and God will bless you. Do not give up hope. Do not give up faith. You just got to trust God um, and, and always seek him in everything that we do. And I was in that posture and I was a posture of yay and amen for my life. And I said, for God, I live and for God, I die. And when I made that declaration, God came and saw about me. He, he was like, I'm coming to see about you. Mm -hmm. I got it. But yeah. And so that, and I want people to know first and foremost is we got to forgive ourselves. We, we allow ourselves to go through what we go through, right? And so we have to forgive ourselves. And then shame is a heavy burden to carry. Mm -hmm. I used to hear women say, God, she's been married how many times? 
three, four. I, she been married so many times I can't even count. Well, and then they used to say, well, she can get them, but she can't keep them. Mm-hmm. Or is she in love with the idea? So all that shame. So I hid behind that. And let's not talk about the corporate sector. Being in corporate and you got all these plaques on your wall with different last names. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, that's you. Oh, you handled that. Oh my God, that was you. Oh my God. Yeah, so we got women today in the church because you know, this is not talked about in the church. And that's why God has given me the strength and the boldness to get my story out and talk about this. It has to be talked about because it's, like I said, it's not talked about in the church. Divorce is not really talked about because uh, if it was, we will shave off a lot. This is God's playing field. Mm-hmm. Marriage is God's playing field, right? So why is our divorce rate so high if this is a thing of God, right? Mm-hmm. And so God, I said, God, I'm going forth. Whatever, wherever you tell me to go, I'm going to go. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do. And whatever you tell me to say, I'm going to say. So he gave it, he's given me the strength and the boldness to tell my story and help women because we got women in the church losing their mind, trying to hold on to marriages that God did not um, um, ordain. Um, God did not say that this is your one. We get in there. I'm like, oh, he was in the church. So since he was in the church, I'm going to marry him. Right. Mm-hmm. That is not the case. We got to understand the church is a hospital. We got a whole bunch of broken people in the church. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, so that and then corporate, we have women, even when I was in corporate, um, will wear my wedding ring, but was not married because I was too ashamed to let them know that I was going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. And because we want to climb that corporate ladder, and a lot of times the corporate will look at you as unstable. If you've been married and divorced, even if you've been married one time and divorced, that divorce things make them feel like you're unstable. And that is so far from the truth. So I'm trying to hit the corporate sector and churches and let these women know it's time to come out. It's Mm -hmm. time to get bold and walk and release all this stuff that you're carrying in your invisible backpack. The shame, the guilt, the fear, simply having no accountability. And forgiving yourself. Yeah, you know, that's so good. Everything that you just shared. And thank you for your transparency through it all. Because I know that, you know, I'm I'm in my third marriage currently. And uh-huh. as I have coached women and, you know, I had someone ask me last week, because me and my, my husband, we do marriage counseling together. And uh-huh. someone asked, you know, we're on our year seven. And both of us, this is his second, this is my third marriage. And Uh I could just see their face. They weren't bold enough to say, well, how y'all going to coach us when y'all? And I, you know, that's what I, before they could even say it, I said, that's what makes me um, qualified because we know all of the mistakes that we've made. We know all the reasons why divorce happens. We know our own um, part in that yes. story. And we're able to identify when we see someone going down that negative road or going down that path. And then we yes. also know the the uh, beautiful uh, blessing that God has given us in this second and third chance of really mm. loving each other as if we've never been hurt. And we don't take it for granted because we went down all those that ro- those roads and we know how to so a lot of times and it's like um it's a lot like football or like a, a um a ath- you know any type of athlete they have yeah. coaches and no yeah. one ever asks the coach if they're still playing or if they you know what team right. do they play for or how come they switch so many teams nobody ever right. asks the coach that they just they know that this coach has this skill set that's going mm-hmm. to help me better And so I could only imagine as you're navigating through the corporate world, as you're navigating through now your, your business, how the stain, you know, the, the enemy is he's, he, he doesn't have any new tricks in his book. No, That's the does. exact same thing that he tricked Eve with, with shame and guilt. That's yep. what got her to cover herself up. And that's what he wants us to do. For those of you that are listening, he literally wants us to cover up and not share our story so that right. we can stay in this place of, of shame and hiding and not break free. Mm-hmm. So I love that you help uh, women do that. And I love that you help them understand that they don't have to stay in a toxic place just for the sake of keeping that last name. Like that's so powerful. I want to take a quick commercial break and just invite anyone that is dealing with those toxic ideas uh, to join the Becoming Her membership. It is only $77 a month and you are able to lock arms with women and have experts like 
Our, the lady that we're having on the podcast today really share their story and share how to break free of the bondage that Satan tries to put on us, how to remove those scales from your eyes. So if you are interested in the Becoming Her program, email us at hello at tuesdaywithtamika.com and we will get you plugged in. So as you navigate it through these spaces of divorce and healing and, and really the key, the key, the key, the key, I don't want anybody to miss this, was navigating through unforgiveness. Mm. Unforgiveness and bitterness will keep us low. It'll keep mm. us in places that we will never be able to grow and expand. And do you know, you'll have perceived victories but mm -hmm. they'll always be overshadowed by the unforgiveness and the bitterness. So as you navigate it through that, and God has blessed you with the beautiful marriage that you are walking in now, how has that transcended your life to where you're able to do the work that you do now with women? Yeah, it, you know what? Um, it has really, uh, it's really catapulted us forward um, because they're like, wow. Um, first of all, she she's like the woman at the well in the mm -hmm. Bible, literally, mm -hmm. um, and not knowing. And people don't understand that we're going through the same thing that they went back. They went through back in the Bible days. It's the mm -hmm. same stuff. We're going through the same stuff. And to see it in living color, to see it right now, right before their eyes is what really helps out. Um, and then for us to be able to stand together and say, this will work and it can work. You you're, keep your foundation strong, which is God, because that's what this is about. This is God's playing field. And this is what helps us uh, to do the work of God and let people know it can work for you. It, and so a lot of them are very receptive um, of what I have to say, because they say, oh, she been, if she's been through it and look where she's at now. Mm -hmm. where she's at now. Um, and that's what people are looking for. People are looking for people that's going to be vulnerable, open, yeah. honest, not sugarcoating stuff. We, you know, the prosperity stuff is good, all of that. But they want to know people, real people who's been through stuff and God has delivered them out of. Yeah. Right. And that's what they're looking for. And that's what I want to be to people. I want to meet people where they are and be able to help and allow God to give me the insight to help them out of where they are. Yeah. And uh, it's been really, really good for um for us and, and and also for myself. I mean, people are really they're coming for like speaking engagements, things like that. Um, but all glory goes to God. But yes, just saying yes to God will take you far. Yes. And even with, you know, we we've all seen the Instagram and Facebook quotes where they say, you know, Noah was a drunkard. Moses yep. was angered, like, oh, you know, all these people in the Bible, Paul was a killer, you know, we yep. have these people and if God was able to use them, yeah. how much more can he use us with these yep. platforms, like, yeah. like, you know, with these social media platforms. So Absolutely. I, you know, really want to encourage people to use their voice and to use their story. You know, I was out of school. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to travel the country and speak mm -hmm. and and to, you know, use my voice and to use my story. And I was at this continuation school in Sacramento, California, and mm -hmm. it was my first time meeting these students. And mm -hmm. I told the principal, give me 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. Um, and we went, you know, into this classroom and I asked the teachers and the principals to leave. And mm -hmm. within 30 minutes, these kids shared stuff with me that they said that they've never shared with anybody. And wow. the principal said, how did you get, you know, I, and I told them, you know, what we say here stays here. And the principal said, how did you get them to talk? Because they were walking by and they heard us laughing and talking and that uh -huh. they cannot get these kids to open up. And I told uh -huh. them, I said, just like you just said, I said, kids want vulnerability. They yeah. want transparency. If yeah. we lead with the letters behind our name, if we lead with our degrees and our yes. degrees, not what qualifies us, mm -mm. kids want to know, mm -mm. people want to know that you yeah. are real, that if Come you on. got through this, the woman at the well, the uh, moment Jesus said, go thy way, she wanted to know everybody, everybody, care that they, they all know, let's call a thing, mm -hmm. a thing. she was the town 
Yes. Oh, you know what Come I mean? On. Everybody knew who she was. They knew yes. the dirt and the the, the um, yes. shame and the guilt that that carried. And especially in those times, you know, right oh. now we're living in this um where women are kind of like um liberated with their sexuality and liberated with their um, uh, you know, being able to choose who they want to be with. But back then, man, uh -huh. this would have been stoned for the for the lifestyle that she lived. So Absolutely. love, I love, love, love that you were not letting the shame and the guilt keep you stuck because you have a coaching program and you wrote this amazing book. I want to hear a little bit about your book. And then I also want you to share about your coaching program, about how people can, that are recovering from divorce, how do they get in contact with you? How do they release the shame so they can recover and be restored into the women that God has called them to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. So first and foremost, my coaching program, Winning Women, um, it it's a, so we started off at a four week and it wasn't enough. They were like, that's not long enough. So we, we <laughs> expanded it to six weeks. We expanded the curriculum to six weeks and they said, ah, this is not enough. We want more. So I'm just, I'm getting ready to uh, release the 12 and the 24 week program. It's out on my website on, um, at Marquette L Walker ministries.com. And that's M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-T-E-L Walker uh, ministries. Dot com And let me tell you, it talks, it just walks the women through um, each stage. And in the first stage that we want to start off with is forgiving, forgiveness, forgiving ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves before we can move forward. Um, because if you carry on with unforgiveness, you open the door for other stuff to come in. So yeah. first of all, we deal with that part first. Um, and then it talks about um, walking them through self-care, uh, time management. It it, it uh, walks them through um, the accountability part because a lot of people run from accountability. They do. Where did that go wrong in this situation? They don't want to look within. They just see, oh, they did this to me. They said this about me. No, it's deeper than that. A lot of times we have to own our stuff and be accountable. Um, for uh, where we are in life and uh, the situations that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's an amazing program. It's biblical um, taught. I um, teach throughout the Bible. I do also talk about my book because I need to be transparent and vulnerable with them um, in this coaching program. And um, so I go through my book and I, I guarantee you, somebody can find themselves in one of the marriages that I had and, <laughs> and, and going deep uh, reading my uh, story. Um, but yeah, so that's been amazing. I absolutely love it. I love the women that um, God has called me to. And then after, um, when I got that out, I finished my book. Well, my book was already finished. So the book is out there, uh, Divorced But Not Defeated. I want every woman to know whether you've been married once or five times. Elizabeth Taylor was eight times and she was still kicking, right? So <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where you are, you just want to get in the right posture of what God has called you to do, um, walk, to get to a place to walk in your purpose. And so Divorce But Not Defeated is going to help the women through that. Not only does my book tell my story, but it also gives women scriptures to read um, to help them through the phase that they're in. It's almost like a, a, it's, it's a place in there where they can um, journal as well as they go and read through my book. Um, Cause I'm, I, like I said, I guarantee you anyone can find themselves in one of those marriages in my book, but it and definitely, you know, I just heard, I just heard Holy spirit. I just heard it in my spirit that there's going to be people listening and they may say, well, I've never been divorced or I, that. And this book is not just for women that are divorced because maybe oh. you have divorced your yourself. Maybe yeah. you have left yourself because you were, <laughs> Um, trying to be for everybody who you weren't supposed to be, you know, who you weren't supposed to be. So you've divorced your own identity. Maybe you okay. divorced your relationship with Christ and you need to get back into that secret place with him. Maybe mm. you divorced your dreams and your goals. And so I do believe yes. that this is a book not to be just looked at as 
a marital divorce, but there are some things that we have a divorce and we have abandoned that God wants to reconcile. So go over and grab this book because this is one of those books that will allow you to um, reconcile yourself back to not only God, but back to yourself. I had to say that sis, because I that felt was good. <laughs> yeah, that was God right there. That is so good. That is so good because you'll read that in my book. You know, I had to divorce from, you know, um, generational curses. I even, yeah. a lot of times we get married, we change our identity. Mm -hmm. We become somebody else, but we're not even walking in our true identity. So that is so amazing how God dropped that in your spirit because that was him. And, and, and it is a book to help in every situation. Um, this book, it can be found on my website. Um, it also is on Amazon.com, uh, is on Barnes & Noble. Um, where else is that? Is that Walmart? So anybody want to go? Well, you know, Walmart is one of our, some of our favorite places. Um, <laughs> it's also there as well, walmart.com. Um, but yeah, go out and get this book. It will be a blessing to your soul. I love that. You guys, we will have all the information in the show notes of how to connect with her. If you are looking for a coach to help you walk through those those places of unforgiveness and learning time management and learning how to truly you know practice self care those of you that have been rocking with me for a minute you know that i say this with my whole heart i know that i'm not everyone's coach so just because god connected you to me through this podcast does not mean that i'm the person that's supposed to walk you through your healing journey so if her voice has resonated with you, if you feel like, you know what, that's exactly what I need. I need that book. I need to get into her coaching program. Make sure you go run to the show notes as soon as we end and connect with her. Go look at her website. Go, you know, just really find out if this is what God has for you. I always say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So sis, mm -hmm. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for sharing your story. I want you, I want to thank you for living unashamed. I want to thank you for helping other women that are still living covered because of the guilt and the shame of divorce, helping them reach yeah. down and pulling them out of that pit of shame and, and grief. I just, I truly, truly thank you for being a part of TWT family and being a part of the podcast today. Before I let you go, I mm -hmm. want you to give us three secrets to how, and, and maybe they ain't secrets, but listen, <laughs> I need you to tell the ladies <laughs> how to stay after, after, you know, because what ends up happening there's this term, it's called the law of awareness. And so mm. oftentimes when we are aware of, okay, I could just go get a divorce. I could, you know, I ain't got to deal with this. I don't. And that's where a lot of folks mindset is. They'll go into mm -hmm. a marriage already with the idea, especially if it's their second marriage, if there's, if that's their mm -hmm. third marriage, me and my yeah. husband have made a declaration. We don't even use that word. Like that term is not even in our vocabulary. Divorce is not an yeah. option like for us. Right. So, and that's right. because we've made a conscious decision that this God told us that we are supposed to be to get now them other ones. There was a purpose. The yeah. purpose wasn't lifelong, but there was a purpose to have some right. children or there was a purpose to do some other things. Right. So how have you and your right. <laughs> give us three secrets of how you are going to make this marriage work with, with the awareness that divorce is a possibility. Talk to us. Absolutely. So first and foremost, as I stated earlier, is this is God's playing field. So when you're when you're real with God, he's going to be real with you. And when it comes to marriage, he's going to be right there for you. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost is sticking and stay, staying connected with the source, which is God. That's first and foremost. And when we're going through stuff, go back to the source. Too many times we're calling our sister, brother, mama, dad, cousin, um, best friend, mm -hmm. instead of going to the source. So number two, go to the source when you're having issues or, you know, you're having a difficulties that we you can't come in alignment with, go to God. He's going to help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then number three, which is most important, as you stated, um, divorce is not even in your vocabulary. Yeah. You don't even discuss that word. That term is not there. So if you go in, in the mindset, as you stated before it with that, you know, what? if this don't work, then, oh, well, then I'll just get another one. 
Mm-hmm. You, you, you can't go in like that. It has to be God, whatever you want out of this, that's what it's going to be. I trust you. This is your playing field. So Father, we're going to stand firm on your foundation and we're going to stand firm in your word. What the word says, it tells you God has given us a roadmap already. Mm-hmm. We just got to get in it. We got to dive in it and we got to study and then we got to believe it and trust it. A to the man. I love that. <laughs> so I, I want to as my sis was giving you guys those three steps, um, I saw this vision, you know, I, I've shared this before and listen, y'all, as I'm on this, not only this healing journey, but this health and wellness journey and your, your girl has, has dropped eight pounds. I'm starting to remember when I was a fine, I mean, I'm still fine, but listen, when I was a fine, thin little thing and I was on the track and I, I, I just had this vision of me prepping for the hundred meter race. And I remember all of the, they they call them heats when you have uh, several races ahead of you. And I remember being in the closest to the last heat because what they end up doing is they stagger the races and the faster runners, they usually run last because people are wait. It's like the, the highlight, right? And so I remember waiting and and you know I'm I'm there and I'm prepping and I'm preparing to run this race but one thing that I did before every race is I visualized it I saw myself winning before I even got into those blocks before mm. I lined up before they walked us down the field I saw it I saw myself winning and so mm. as you are navigating through these healing streets through these relationship streets through these business seats, I want you to see yourself winning and know that if you win the last heat, you're right where you're supposed to be because that means that you're one of the fastest ones. And that means that God's hand is on you. So see yourself win, be the best that you could be and know that God has not forgot about you. I am so thankful for my sis being on this podcast. You all make sure you go over to Apple Podcasts, rate the podcast, share this with somebody. Share this with somebody that needs to hear this information. Tag us on social media. All of our social media handles will be in the show notes. Until next week, we love you all. Bye-bye.